All right, good afternoon YouTube and welcome back to Fat Cat Collections. Uh, happy Saturday. I uh, hope you guys uh, watched my video recently of my, uh, what I would call my life before Invicta. All the watches I've collected and accumulated over the years. Uh, I just wanted to share with you guys some of those stories. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and I want to talk about today is my third part of my, uh, my series of videos where I talk about the luxury watch misconceptions of quality. Now, I just want to be clear that I'm not saying that when I'm discussing these these things um, that those higher end brands like Rolex or Omega and, and all the other Breitling and all the other brands out there that you spend upwards of $5,000 for. I'm not saying that they're garbage watches or that they're bad watches. In any way, they're good watches. They're great timepieces, right? But for what my my opinion and a lot of people's opinion in the watch world, a lot of my subscribers, guys who actually come on here and comment regularly, um, they're not just making comments like some of these snobs do or these people who don't know what they're talking about. They don't come on here and just be like, oh, this brand sucks and, and that's it, you know. They, they actually own these watches. They have the Rolexes that are worth 10 grand. They have all these different types of watches. And what I love about some of these folks, and these are the ones who I really enjoy uh, commenting with, is that they have these watches, yet they have an appreciation for other brands. And, and they know by owning these watches that, yeah, these are nice watches. These are good watches. But they don't make brands like Invicta and Aragon in these, you know, 100 to you know, $300 watch is garbage, you know? And again, Victor is always the one that gets the most hate of all the brands. And I just don't, I rarely do I ever get anybody say anything about an Aragon watch. An Aragon watch, their quality is right on par with Invicta. They're not better, they're not worse. I do think in some cases, I like I, they give you a little more for your money. I think they're, in some cases, a better value uh, because, you know, a lot of times their watches, and most of the times, most of their watches, are automatic and they use that Seiko NH35, 36, 34, you know, they use that a lot of their watch. So they kind of tend to stay clear of the chronograph stuff and which I personally like. I like the fact they keep it simple and they give you an automatic movement. I wish that every one of my chronograph Invictus were just Seiko NH35 autos because then I'd never have to worry about batteries. And that's really all I do. Most people who have a chronograph, rotating bezel, all this stuff, they don't use it for what the purpose is. They don't use it to dive. They don't use, they basically don't use the chronograph. They use the watch to tell time. That's about it. Now, I'm not telling you that that's, you know, that that's bad or anything like that. I'm just saying that, um, that you, just because you have, that some of these guys, they think they know because you pay $5,000 for a watch that that's worth it. And it's just, I'm sorry, but uh, I was looking at Rolexes yesterday. I was like, you know what? Maybe one day I'll, maybe I'll, okay, let me think about it. You know, maybe I'll get one someday, you know? Maybe I'll rationalize that purchase. And the more I looked at it, the more I said to myself, absolutely not. I mean, I looked at some of the ones that were five grand for your entry level stuff. And I was like, what am I, what? Why would you buy this for five grand? It just doesn't make any sense to me. And I, I just, so that's just, again, just my opinion, not bashing the brand, not bashing Rolex owners. I'm just saying I'm bashing those fools who come on with ridiculous statements. So this is, again, my third part of the series where the misconception, uh, one guy gave me a great term and I've been using it a lot lately. It's called manufactured desire. And things that manufacturers, one guy said to me that, um, well, this watch here is used with better stainless steel. I said, well, okay, well, how is that? And he told me that this specific stainless steel used in this brand uh, was from submarines. All right, so, so okay, so you're telling me because it's used from submarines and maybe it's got, he said it claimed it had a, a, a harder resistance to being scratched. All right, so, okay, again, manufactured desire. Is that really true? You know, is it, I mean, I don't know, 316 is pretty friggin' good. I haven't had any issues with any of mine. So is that, so again, manufactured desire. Well, a company will say, oh, well, this is used in submarines. So this is why you have to pay more. Just like with Rolex, in my opinion, using that stainless steel that they use in their watches, it's not gonna mean anything to the normal person wearing the watch. I mean, unless you throw that watch in some salt water and leave it there for a couple of years, it's not gonna make a difference. Most people who own a Rolex don't even take it in the water, okay? So they baby their Rolex. I mean, that's why they have their beater watch, you know? So it's just kind of ridiculous. And it, again, it's these, these manufacturers' features to make you think or, or to, 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 to give you, think you're getting something that's better when you don't really need it. It's an unneeded, uh, it's an unneeded feature. 
okay? Just so you can brag about it, basically. Oh, well, this is this. You can rationalize why this is better when it's never going to mean anything to you. Just like when, you know, when I used to sell car audio, you know, you don't go, you know, throwing a bunch of features at the person buying it because they may not care about those features. And let's face it, most of the features that like that, that manufacturers come up with are really to get you to buy their product. And it doesn't, it's not going to change your life. It's not going to solve a problem. It's not going to be any better or more reliable. Maybe under specific conditions it will be, but you're never going to be in those conditions ever, nor will the watch. So it's, it's meaningless. It's manufactured desire. And so again, I'm coming around to these manufacturers coming up with these, these reasons on why you should spend a lot more money for their product. Now I'm not saying that maybe the quality control is better. That's fine. But here's the thing. It, it should be for what you're paying. I mean, if Invicta went around and said, okay, we're going to charge five grand for our watches, but now we're going to, we're going to go over, we're going to make sure everything about those watches is, is amazing, you know? which I think they're already amazing. I mean, come on, it's just $150 Grand Diver compared to a Rolex, okay? The, what, is a Rolex a little more accurate? You know, it, it's asinine. And everybody who has a Rolex and has a Grand Diver will tell you that yeah, the Rolex is a great, nice, fine timepiece. It's refined. But is it $5,000 refined? Is it is it really worth the price difference? If it's for, for you, then wonderful. Then more power too. But for me, it's not. But one thing I'm not gonna do is make fun of you for or bash your brand okay so just so i got that cleared there with that i'll move on to what i want to talk about today again is an indication a misconception of quality that some guys i've seen review and they they use this as a indication of quality and this is and i'm not going to pull out a bunch of watches like i did the other day i was going to make this a shorter video to kind of uh, start to wrap up this series okay these misconceptions that one guy, he took a watch. This was about comparing a Rolex to, uh, like, I forget the other brand. It was a homage watch, right? So he basically would twist the band like this. He'd take the band and shake it and move the links, okay? And say, well, yeah, you can feel the difference on this. This is a much better quality watch. The Rolex doesn't hardly move. That's not an indication of quality, folks. That's an indication of how the manufacturer wants to produce that band. It has to do with the tolerances set up when they produce that when they make those links by a machine, okay, and how they, they've produced that watch. Just because a band has a little bit of wiggle in it doesn't mean that it's a lesser quality watch compared to one that doesn't have wiggle in it. It's, it's an absurd, it's a rationale. It's, a, it's, it's something people come up with to say, oh, well, look, this one's tighter. That has nothing to do with it. If it was the opposite way and that, that the Rolex had played it and you went over and took the off brand and, and wiggled it and say this one's too tight you can see yeah they didn't they didn't fit it together right they're, they're, they're too tight they're too snug no it depends on how the manufacturer wants to produce that product do you think that the the amount of machinery and the tooling it takes to produce an aragon watch okay do you think that that that, that machinery can't produce band links that are tighter that's not how they do it. They want the play in there. And most watches out there want the play in the band. That's just how most watches are. So it's it's just a, it's a ridiculous assumption that because a band is tighter that that makes a higher quality product. That's ridiculous. And like I did, said the other day about the bezel, one guy posted that go turn the bezel on a Rolex. Well, you know what? I'm going to go turn the bezel on the Rolex and I'm going to bring one of my Invicta Pro Divers and really experience this amazing difference worth uh, you know, 50 times as much. I mean, I, I, I hope it changes my life. I hope it's earth shattering. I mean, it's ridiculous. So turn the bezel, which you never turn. Like who the hell turns or no, most people who wear a watch don't ever mess with it. They just don't. Most people just leave it alone. Most people are not using the bezel for what it's designed to do. So it's just a feature of a watch because that's what makes uh, certain watches. They put that feature on there because it is, it does have a purpose, but most people don't use it. So you're telling me that I'm gonna turn the bezel on a $5,000 Rolex and be blown away that I'm gonna sell all my watches and go buy one? Most ridiculous thing ever. You think that most people are concerned with the, the bezel? That's a watch snob who probably doesn't even own a Rolex or an Invicta coming on with just an, just an asinine statement. So again, um, you know, other people, other folks will say, oh, well, you know, um, and I'll, I'll, well, actually I'm gonna save that for the next video. We'll, we'll pick, Point number four, which I'll touch on as well. I did, did the, I did the bezel, did the movement, and today we're, we're focusing on the band. Uh, so again, um, just remember guys, band play does not make an item luxury if it moves less. 
not the case. It's how the manufacturer wanted to do it. If Aragon wanted to do it, they would do it. If other brands want to do it, they would also do it. They don't because they don't want to do that, okay? Most watches have play in the band for a very specific reason, okay? That does help prevent wear on the links. Just to let you guys know, if something's too tight, like for instance, if it's gold plated like this, that's too tight, you know, you're gonna cause wear. A lot more wear and more friction if it's tighter. So, um, just something to think about, guys. All right, so that was my quick video on another luxury watch quality or or any watch quality misconception. Um, tell me what you guys think. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I have a couple more of these videos coming up. And again, I know some of you guys love the Sterling watches. And those are I'm also re-reviewing all that stuff too. So stay tuned, guys. Lots more coming down the road. Remember, if you like the content, subscribe. Click like on the video and definitely comment. I encourage you, if you're not one to comment, give your opinion. Just do it in a respectful way. No problem. And I'll try not to come after you too hard. All right, so uh, what else? Uh, and if you do like the content uh, in any of my videos and you want to make a purchase on anything I review, there's always a link in the bottom. It does help support the channel. And it's been great, guys. Thank you very much. Oh, and one more thing. I did a video the other day uh, just because I got some new lights in the office. And I, uh, I probably won't upload it because I was, you know, had a couple beers, you know, we don't need to be posting that, but, um, you know, because it's never a good, it's never a good idea to post, you know, you know, video if you, if you had a couple beers, but nonetheless, um, I did comment on, or, or make a comment about my lighting, several folks, have, one guy said he doesn't want to watch me anymore because of my lighting, I want you guys to tell me what you think now, and what I've done, uh, the batteries are almost dead in these LED lights I have, I've been using those, and I have the lamps on, right now in this room, there are Two lamps behind me with smart bulbs. Two lamps I just purchased over here with smart bulbs. Same lamps right on the desk here with a white shade that I have on with uh, some uh, singlet bulbs. Uh, they're at max brightness. They're like a 60 watt equivalent and I have the LEDs on me as well. Tell me what you guys, let me just flash a watch at you real quick so maybe you can just get an idea of, uh, let me take this one off here. In case you're wondering, this is uh, an old school Addy K I have. I love this watch. Let me throw on the Aragon here. I just want you guys to tell me if the lighting looks better. And I think it really does. And if it doesn't, then I give up because I have a lot of lights on right now. Uh, I if I, I can't have any more lights in my face, it's bright enough as it is. So tell me if this has made a difference, guys. Tell me if this makes the video more enjoyable. Um, I want to make this stuff better for you folks. So that's about it. All right, guys. Have a good weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.